Last night on Renault Rumble, oh, yeah. come in, two teams arrive. The Blues from the East and the Reds from the West. Six shiny new couples ready to have a crack. Are we ready to rumble? Three, two, one, three, two, one! Their mission... Oh, God. ..to completely <laughs> renovate two houses in a week... I just tapped a wall. Oh, 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 and it almost fell down. Don't touch anything! <laughs> ..for deserving homeowners. Sarah had terminal cancer. She only survived because her friend Madeline helped raise over $100,000 for life-saving medication. We watched her get really, really sick. It was terrifying. The silver lining of the whole thing was yeah. to, be able to, to be able to see, like, how much people cared. After being through so much, it's time to help them get on with their lives. Just really looking forward for the week to be over and show her what, we, what we've done for her. Tonight, as the pressure mounts to deliver on time... You are kidding me. No. Cracks appear in both teams. There's disputes over territory. Where am I putting my sink? Where am I putting a dining room table, Dane? The kitchen is more important, though. And someone's not playing the team game. I'm skewing. I'm livid. I was just shocked. It's all going to go bad now. That choked our chickens pretty, pretty severely. I, I was seriously livid. Sun rises on the Renault Rumble base camp. The Mount Isa girls are cock a hoop. Oh, good morning, blue team. <laughs> Eyes and shine. <laughs> oh, I'm ready. Sarah's snoring like a freight train last night, but that's okay. It's that's all worth okay. it because I stayed up last night and did our budget on a spreadsheet. I think I'm warranted for that snoring now. <laughs> so I am ready to rumble. Yes. Yeah. Across the park, the Western Reds are getting organised with an early morning day four strategy meeting. One's for walls, one's for ceilings. Yeah. Dane and Leanne from South Oz are this week's team captains. They are also a loving mother and son. How have you been? Oh, I'm all right, thank you. They're so gorgeous. We think we're pretty unique, being um, daughter and... Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, no. We both have quite strong personalities, but we have fun, don't we? We do, we have fun. <laughs> don't underestimate the mother and son team. Yeah. Yesterday, Dane injured his hand. Yeah, I was just knocking the basin out, and uh, I think I just collected a bit of the porcelain on the way down. I've still got to take it easy, because it only happened yesterday, so... I'll probably be on the final day doing the ordering. I can't really pick up anything heavy and I can't make a fist with my right hand, so anything I can do for, for the team um, without my right hand, I'll be doing. Back with the blue team, it's deadline day for the bathroom design. I've got my Reese shirt on, because today's all about the bathroom. Sales manager Scott and his wife Nadia from Melbourne have a very busy life and three active kids. Scott loves to renovate, started before the kids were born, and 10 years later is still going. I came home from work one night and I was six months pregnant and he had a beer in one hand and a uh, sledgehammer in the other. There was, I think, a couple of instances where I think just above this area here, he actually fell through the roof like a wrecking ball. You've got to have fun with Renault's. That's it. <laughs> You've got to do it with a beer and have fun with it, I reckon. <laughs> Just like at home, things haven't happened fast here either. After four days, they've finally locked down their ever-changing bathroom plans. Last night we worked on the uh, final, final, final plan for the bathroom, and I had all the measurements, mm. and I sat there and I was drawing on a pad and I did everything to scale, 
and I thought I'd nailed it and I couldn't believe it. It was like we hit the lucky dip. I was sitting there going, nah, something's going to bite me because everything fits. Here we go. Ta -da. I've even got measurements, so I've checked it and double checked. I actually question myself because I go, that can't be right. That cannot have fitted. I've got two, just I've got a backup. Always have plan B. And off to work they go. You ready? It's not about the money, money, money. We don't need your money, money, money. We just wanna make it all The house has gotta be perfect. The cut. You're such a good songwriter. I know. I think I could be Stevie Wonder. The Renault Rumble teams have been given a budget of $200,000 per house. The blue team is doing up Maddie's house. She's the lady who saved her friend's life. As the blue team arrive on site, Builder Simo is waiting on Scott and Nadia's bathroom plan. We need Scott and Nadia to make a decision straight away this morning. I've got plumbers coming to rough in this bathroom and the sparkies. And I've already booked a plasterer to come in this afternoon to stop up. So it has to be done now. As well as doing the bathroom and laundry this week, they're also building the main bedroom. Scott, Nadia. Good morning. Good morning. What, you two first. Simo. Have we got a decision? I've got plumbers here already. Yes. Waiting to go. Have yeah. you got plumbers? Yeah. Why haven't they roughed in yet? Yeah, I don't know what decision. I need to know what we're doing. We're ready, mate. <laughs> Simo said, well, I hope you've got something for me for this bathroom. And um, I said, yep, we've got it. And then Simo and I walked in and I started, I measured the walls and worked out that the chippies when they built the wall was 100 mil shy. The boys moved it. Ah, oh, the boys have screwed me. They screwed me 100 mil. 100 mil doesn't sound like much, but the impact is huge. 100 mil less space now means the shower won't fit and they will need to move the bath. Oh, I can't believe it's been three days and I still haven't worked out a bathroom plan. Yeah. Blue team captains Lisa and John are skeptical about sales manager Scott's building experience. The bathroom went terribly wrong because Scott just doesn't know how to use a tape measure. I, look, I've always said I can't count, so it's probably a bit of me. <laughs> Do you have plan B? Yeah. What was plan B? Having a plan B has saved this guy's bacon. We've gone to plan B. Plan B. Plan B with a dash of C in there. The bath can now be moved from the window wall to the side wall, giving more room for their shower. Now the build can proceed and the tradies can get on with it. Over in the Red House, the whole place has been gutted. So now it's time to finish the demo and start rebuilding this empty shell. Inside, the team are hard at it, ripping out nails so Jip Rock can go up and create brand new walls. This is the least amount of fun I've had. Little reward. You spend literally 20 minutes in like on working on about two metres going. You should be quicker than that though. Shut yeah. your face, James. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff that's needed to fill this empty house. So Holly and team captain Leanne hot-footed to carpet court and Beaumont tiles to lock in essential items ASAP. We chose all the carpet for the room, for the bedrooms and the flooring throughout the house. And that was really quick. That colour there would probably suit what you're after. Yeah, OK. As you can see. We've got a lot of timber oh to, to, to choose from. Probably the butternut will probably yeah. be the better product. Fantastic. Yeah. I think that's perfect. Yeah. Yeah. Really exactly really what we're that. after. Absolutely. Can I shall I take a photo? Yeah, take a photo. And so that's through to Hayley. Yeah. I've got carpet. Oh, OK, here we go, yeah. That one there. The darker one, that's what yeah, we went I with, like yeah. Seeing yep. everyone's happy. Said, yep, go ahead, ahead. It looks fantastic. So. That was way easier than what we thought it was going to be. I know. <laughs> <laughs> Next stop for Holly and Leanne is across Melbourne at Beaumont Tar. Okay. While Leanne has to get some tiles for her kitchen splashback, Holly has the big order. She has to urgently lock in all her floor-to-ceiling bathroom tiles so tiling can start tomorrow. 
Being a seasoned shopper, Leanne has quickly prowled the store and pounced on some tiles she loves. Yeah, I found them. They're there. Those ones there? Yeah. Yep. That's them. I'd have to check the, with the supplier to see if they've got them in stock. OK. As team captain, it's Leanne's decision on how the budget is divvied up. It's 10 grand total budget. She's allocated $8,000 for Holly's bathroom and two grand for her kitchen. We had 8,000, obviously, doing the bathroom and the laundry from Beaumont Tiles. We, we all knew we were going to need that. Dan and Leanne's was 2,000 for their kitchen, which we all thought, look, that's pretty generous. They may not need it. If they don't, then we can just throw it towards ours. But all of a sudden, the budget's been thrown out the window. Leanne just wants the tiles she likes, and they're expensive. They must have picked gold bullion because they were $3,700 for a small splashback. I didn't realise that the tiles that I have chosen were, are actually custom made, so they are actually making them as we speak. Leanne got her quote in first, and I was just shocked. How much? How many tiles have you got? What have you, you just got the splash back and it's come up at 3 7. Yep. Leanne doesn't seem concerned that she's blowing the budget and spent almost double what she should. You know, the sensible thing would be, hey, guys, look, you know, we're going to blow budget on this. Are we going to be able to work something out or pinch some money from somewhere else? It wasn't like that. was when things started to become clear that no one's allowed to blow budget, but when we do, bang, that's the decision and that's fine. Yeah. I um, had my heart set on these particular tiles, which were um, glass. Like $3,700 for a tile that you could have got a glass mosaic look the exact same for about a quarter of the price. In the beginning, it was like team, team, team. But uh, then when the tiles came into play, it was uh, me, me, me. And so therefore, the bathroom couldn't have a certain whatever it was they needed because I had spent probably $1,000 more than I should have. What's our total budget for? Ten. Because we're going floor to ceiling. Holly had to change her whole plans and it, we were just so mad. And that was the beginning of the kind of meaning of That was the crack. Things. Coming up, Team Captain Dane makes a grab for territory. Where am I putting my sink? Where am I putting a dining room table, Dane? Hayley feels ripped off. We do not have a dining room. Oh. And then there's people getting their knickers in a knot, left... Oh, I don't know about the front yard. ...right uh. and centre. Obviously, Renee's got her feathers in a twist. That's well, that's unfair, though, to us. Like, that choked our chickens pretty, pretty severely. <laughs> Reno Rumble. The Eastern Blues are renovating Maddie's house. She's the lady who helps save her friend's life. The blue team are Scott and Nadia from Melbourne, Sarah and Renee from Magic Mount Isa, and Lisa and John from Sydney. They're the team captains this week, doing the guest bedroom and living room. Being a carpenter by trade, John is all over the tools. I'm in my element, mate. Got the nail guns going, drop saws going. Pumped. Across town, partner Lisa has hit the shops with Sarah from Mount Isa to put some style on the dial. So I've come into Freedom and fortunately Trent's been able to help me sort of put together an industrial looking living area. It's working for me. I really love it. I think I'm actually going to take a photo and send it off to John and just get his thoughts on it before I, I start purchasing. Yeah. She's sending me photos. And what are your thoughts, mate? I don't, don't like it. <laughs> I'm, no, I'm no stylist, but I think the two chair colours don't really go. No, no, I don't like it. Let me send you another photo. No, I don't, didn't really like that photo. No, OK, yeah, Blue sure. <laughs> Try something else, send it through, all right? I'll send it through to you with pillows, but yeah. that's fine. All right, okay, bye. John doesn't seem to like this look, but I feel like I'm going with my gut here because, to be honest, what does he know? He's a male. <laughs> Sarah did bring it to my attention that the judges might not like that coffee table with the holes in it. But he didn't you be able to use it in everyday life? 
Mm -hmm. think about she going to be able to put your glass of wine if you're watching TV. She just sort of said to me, you know, is that something if they're to have children, that's quite practical for them, you know, with hands getting stuck in the wire or even, you know, a drink or food. And I thought, you know what, that's actually a really good piece of advice. Oh. All right, just got an updated photo from Lisa. So she's thrown a couple of pillows in there. Still got the brown chair and different coffee table, which I actually like. It's starting to get better. That's the only, that's my only issue, the brown couch. I think if she finds something a little bit more suitable to go with the grey. Seems like she's just trying to cover up the brown bike. Yeah, I'm, I'm just waiting for the next photo and I'm thinking she's going to throw a towel over so I won't even see any of the brown, mate. He is still trying to get rid of that accent chair. I think the colour's throwing him a little bit. But again, I feel that it's quite an industrial looking chair with that washed out kind of leather. Um, so I'm really just trying to get him to like it as much as I do. Over in the Western Red House are Holly and Steve from Broome in Western Australia, mother and son Dane and Leanne from Adelaide, and quirky South Oz couple Jimmy and Hayley. I'm Hayley. And I'm Dane. And I carry this team. <laughs> We're from Adelaide and welcome to our home. That's it. Twist it. It's one of those like fitness things that couples do together. We sometimes try a hand at Muay Thai. James is very good at it. Watch out. Her weaknesses are that she believes that she knows more than everybody else, even though she doesn't. Especially when she doesn't, she won't admit it. So that's definitely an issue, don't you think, dear? No, she doesn't, because that doesn't happen. Jimmy and Hayley are renovating the living and dining area at the back of the house, and Leanne and Dane are doing the adjoining kitchen. Now, the whole area has been gutted and opened up. It's become as obvious as an open wound that space is tight. And the first battle for territory is about to begin. The kitchen was the first thing to go in in the living, dining, kitchen area. So Dan and Leanne went and ordered their kitchen to however they were going to do it. Their plans that they showed us was a U-style kitchen going around the frame of the room. Then I found out they were putting in a big, long island bench out the front. And I started measuring up our space to see how much room we had to work with. And I worked out that kitchen was almost half the room. So Hayley's calculated that the kitchen island bench will intrude into her small dining room. And there'll only be a tiny 800mm gap allowing entry into the kitchen. I lost it. I was like, Dane, what have you done? So, Dane, this was meant to be open and this now whole thing is blocked off. Yeah. I thought you were doing a U. This was the only option to put an island in. Otherwise, we This could... isn't an island. This is a whole thing. Block. You can if only get wanted... through here. Otherwise, the kitchen would be one wall. So the, and all... then have a freestanding fridge. The only way to get into the kitchen is through this yeah. 800 thing. Yeah. Why does this have to come out so far, though? Why can't it only come out halfway? And then you see one person on it. Because there's cupboards there. It's all so storage space. She, she Dave, wants what's, storage what's more space. important, having people space. sitting here, facing into a kitchen, or... It's, it's a prep area, because the sink is in here. So where am I putting my sink? Where am I putting a dining room table, Dane? The kitchen is more important, though. They wanted a kitchen for entertaining. Um, kitchen is a feature of the house. It's a selling point of the house. If they're an entertaining couple, you know what I mean? They needed a big kitchen. They needed kitchen space. They wanted a kitchen bench. And therefore, we gave them a breakfast bar. We've got a whole... We've got one wall. One wall. Is What's the only place What's happening it? on this wall? There's a window there and the bifold doors. The oh, bifold doors, doors start here. Wall. Then what am I putting there? Do you want to there? Have a, have a seat there. The brief from the owner was we like to entertain and we like to entertain up to 15 guests per week. Between the bathroom and the kitchen hogging half the house, there's not much left over. OK, so you're, you're happy with this? Yeah. And you're happy with the dining room having a tiny little square dining table? Well, we're going to have to sort out a table that fits, I guess. But why can't you sort out yours to let because us... Because the fit... kitchen's already been designed. Yeah. I know, but we did, we're finding out now that it's coming out to here. Almost we haven't worked space. out that it's coming out to here. Just said I said it's coming that far off the wall. Oh, two, but he said it six. starts here. You just randomly Hang walked on. up to the corner of the Dane, building. Dane, you told me 2426 from there. Yeah, that's, that's the length of it, Hayley. Have you measured it off of this wall? 
So it's 264? No, that's the length of the breakfast bar. This is the thing I've got an issue with, Dane. Yeah, I know. But have you worked out actually the length of it on this wall? Why do I need that? Because then you know where the breakfast bar ends. All right, before we keep arguing, before we keep arguing, have we got an actual plan? I thought it was from here. No, you haven't measured it from the wall. Okay, there you go. Okay. Dane, why are you correct me that Hang on! I wasn't in here. So what Haley's done is not measure off the back wall. The bench actually takes up less of her precious dining space than she thought. It turns out I was starting my measurement from the wrong point because when I showed Dave my pretty picture, he went, yeah, that's it. Exactly, I came in here with you ripping my head off when I already explained to you You should have said about outside. 10 minutes ago, Haley, it's not from there. I said, how do you measure off that wall? About 30 seconds ago, you said that. <laughs> Wait a second, guys. Is this going to affect my bathroom? <laughs> <laughs> I think the kitchen's being a bit greedy in the size of the kitchen. I think probably the bathroom's being a bit greedy as well, and I think people have just been nodding their heads and letting things go. It's all right, we need to have these little... We need to have it out. We've been going too well. Good chat. Did we achieve anything? Come here. <laughs> Come here. <laughs> we're all friends. Yeah, we're friends. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up... He won't pass on Inga's number or email contacts. Someone's not playing ball with the other contestants. Well, I think it was more of a power trip. I said, where's the plants for this front entrance of the house? Hang on a minute. I don't know about the front yard. Oh, okay. This is going to cause a drama. I oh. <laughs> really can't do it. We just have, I think, untrustworthy people amongst us. This is Renault Rumble. Yes, 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 yes. So at the moment, it's crisis time for the red team's bathroom because any hiccup could mean no delivery. There's such a strict time frame on a bathroom because you've got screeding, you've got waterproofing. There's just so much work involved. And normally, you know, a bathroom would be normally be like two, three weeks. So to get that done in a week, everything has to be down to the minute. It's hard enough when things go to schedule, but the decision about the bath has been stalled. Yesterday, Steve and Holly were determined not to put a bath in the bathroom. No bath. Geez, he did say, I want a bath. We plan on staying in this house for a fair bit of time, so we'd like to have a bath. We'd like to have a bath. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, they want a bath. Look, and we wanted to extend. All right, this became known as the bathroom... ..debathal. Today, they've grabbed a brain and have decided to stick in a bath. With Holly making a desperate dash to Reese, hoping to get the right-size bath on a women of prayer. But it's all last minute, and they are cutting it fine. We didn't know if they had it in stock because it's a, it's a smaller size bath and um, there's not that many of them because, you know, they're not, they're not an ideal size. Hoping that you can help me out here. Sure. I desperately need this bath okay. um, that you've got in your catalogue mm -hmm. because okay. it's the only bath that's going to fit in our bathroom. We regularly keep those, so that's no problem. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, my absolutely. God. We wear oh. some baths, so no oh, problem at all. Which size do you want? Found out that the bath was in stock and they had it there and it was the biggest relief. Yeah, I mean, looking at it now framed up, she's a wee little tub. It was just for if they have kids down the track, they've got that option. Well, finally that on-again, off-again bath has arrived on time and ready to be installed. And we'll uh, move it right out the back, I think. Steve-o! Scotty, mate, But you're glad you? to see me, aren't you? Oh, every time. Oh, uh, no. Now, I saw the bath out there, and this is the bath here. It looks straight from the set of Snow White, doesn't it? Yeah, mate. Straight out of Dopey's dressing room. Yeah. Little she's, tiny one. She's small. <laughs> it's a second bath. But, you know what? what? You've got, you got a tub in there, and that's good enough to bath the kids, and actually an adult will squeeze in there to feel like soaking in a tub. And you've still got a decent sized shower. Yeah, that was the plan. We managed to pinch about 50 mil, but every mil counts in here. And, you know, this is a small house. You can't be expecting to have this incredible size bathroom in a tiny house like this. Yeah, They're expecting this sort of thing. We're just trying to make it feel as big as possible, but yeah, yeah, that's yeah. all we can really do and just try and get hit the brief. We did go for a deep bath, so if they do decide to have a wine in the bath, they will still be able to do that. Just not together. <laughs> <laughs> Over at the Blue House, there's still lots of demo on the inside. 
It should be called Demo Rumble. And the Velux guys are hard at it, installing skylights for the living and dining room. But on the outside, the communal front yard is still untouched. So it's a communal area at the front of the house. We're all tapping out of our own budgets to make this happen. A couple of days ago, there was a landscape lady who was organised by Scott. Uh, she popped around, very nicely of her, popped around, discussed a few alternate ideas or suggestions. That landscape lady's name is Inga. Hi, I'm Inga. I'm the landscaper. Awesome, I'm Lisa. How are Hi, you? Lisa. And after discussing a brief design... I would probably think something very low maintenance. Yep. Considering they're going to try and start a family. She agreed to send all plans to Scott. I'll give you my email address and everything and then we can... Yep, you've got my card. 48 hours later, the blue team are still waiting on plans. Aren't we getting rid of this wall? No, no, we're oh, keeping it. this, are we? Oh, OK. And Scott denies receiving anything. So is she going to run you a quote? Yeah, I'm going to talk to her. We've got to find out those things, and that'll and determine will... the next. But his teammates are suspicious. Scott is organising it. He won't pass on Inga's number or email mm. contacts to any other team members. We can still do a deck for you. That's not a problem. We're finding this a bit sheepish. We are. Scott and Nadia took on this front yard situation. I think it was more of a power trip. They wanted to be in charge of something they could have gotten credit for. I'm asking a lot of questions and not particularly getting any responses. I have to ask Scott, because I don't know that she said they'll pay the lot and put a pot. Why her decking? Oh, decking. Are, are they going to put a timber deck here? No, it's all heritage. It is. Uh, it is why, heritage. It is. That's, yeah. why, that's why we've got to keep the tiles. Oh, so we've got to say... Well, see, I didn't, this is what I was just questioning before I start pulling them up. So she actually said through a plan like she was going to? She's going to in about an hour. Actually, Inga has sent through a quote and a design board, but Scott hasn't passed it on. Basically, I said to everyone, you've got to trust Inga. She's an award-winning landscaper. And you know, let her do what she's good at. Stop trying to inject yourself in other in that sort of stuff. You don't have to. Inga knows what she's doing. Um. I just I just wish we all had a I just wish I knew about it, that's all. So I just had a chat with Scott. I said, oi, I said, where's the plans for this front entrance of the house? I said we've been waiting for a day for it. Where where are they? He goes, well, you can talk to Inga tomorrow at seven o'clock. He said there's not to be any more discussion about it. I said, well I don't think so. I'll be brutally honest. Obviously, Renee's got her feathers in a twist over the front yard. Hang on a minute. Oh, I don't know about the front yard. Uh, okay. This is going to cause a drama. Oh, well, <laughs> no. it's all going to go bad now. So everyone except Scott is in the dark about the design. The only thing they do know is that the house is heritage and all the tiles need to be kept and restored. The blue team is slowly crumbling and falling apart because we just have, I think, untrustworthy people amongst us. And, you know, it's not ideal when you're trying to work collectively as a team, but unfortunately, some people are just like that. They have, you know, an ulterior motive, and I think Scott and Nadia do. a new day on the Renault Rumble lot. The South Oz team, Hayley and Jimmy, there's still some adjusting to do. Caravan life is actually quite fine. I'm, I need, like, total darkness and silence when I go to bed, and you get none of those things here, but you're so tired, you just... Red team captain Dane's up and raring to go. How are you? Jeez. Hey, mate. How are we? He'll do anything for attention. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he will. I think you're right there. <laughs> OK, let's get serious. It's time for the update. They've got a bit of work to do today. All our walls are up and the jib rocking's been done. The plaster has stayed back late last night to um, continue that. So uh, I guess when we go in there this morning, we're basically going to have our uh, all of our rooms set up. So oh, we're here. We're just rolling in late because we're bad asses. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh, straight on camera. <laughs> you can be sure. Oh, my God, I'm actually oh. going in. 
Is she right, hey? Any damage? She's fine, no. Nah. Oh, loves it. Not it's at sweet. all. Ugh, what a way to start the morning. <laughs> In future, we drive with Dane and Leanne. Oh, oh wow. Internally, the Red House is gradually getting there. Last night, the plasterers did an all-nighter, and today, the bedroom walls are up. It actually looks like a room. <laughs> the boys have done such a good job. But there's still a lot of work to do out the back in the kitchen, living and dining area. <laughs> Over with the blues, there's still a lot of angst about the front garden, or lack of it. As you can see, the front of the house here, not much has been going on. We've been waiting a couple of days for the planning so we can have a look at the designs. They still haven't come through. So they've planned an early morning meeting with Inga the landscaper. So John and I very persistently had asked Scott, where are these plans? And Scott had very bluntly said to me, tomorrow morning when Inga comes at 7 o'clock, you can ask her then. I don't want to hear any more questions about it. Quite frankly, Inga's an award-winning landscaper. Mm. I trust her opinion <laughs> over anyone else. For sure. All right, guys, so what we've done, we've got everyone together here to meet Inga this morning to um, discuss this front yard situation. And so... what a situation it is. <laughs> <laughs> Have you guys seen the design board I sent to Scott? No. no. OK. No, I haven't got that. I haven't got that. <laughs> Scotty. Oh, Scotty, you've been hiding it from you. it. Oh. So you did get a design. Did. No, I didn't get a design. Oh, I've not got a design. I got... I got Maybe yeah, we need sent junk on. mail. I don't trust Scott and Nadia. I don't trust Scott and Nadia uh, at all. It's pretty hard to keep six people in the loop when you're, when you're running and someone's in your ear every five minutes. Um, yes. OK, yeah, so I can show you guys the planting palette now, which is yeah. on my phone. This is going to be a new bluestone large format pathway, so um, we've got metre yeah. by 500. Oh, you don't want to do that? I don't want to be paying for the bluestone out of... I don't want to go over budget. Yeah. If that, if oh, it's only, it's only cost you guys 200 bucks, so... That's fine. Yeah. I'll pay for have it you shown them the quote, yeah. Yeah. Scott? Have yeah, you yeah, shown them the quote? It's quiet. We haven't oh. seen it. And that's why we're like, oh, we we're a little bit out of the loop. <coughs> Seems to be a bit of a miscommunication. All you need to know is we're at 5-4. And we voted and we it for put... nine. We didn't know we were at 5-4 until right now. now. So if we could have seen some planning, that would have been essential. Absolutely. So um, <laughs> he had the paperwork. Right. Scotty hasn't passed so it Scott's on. got the paperwork. <laughs> all right, hang on. I've actually... I did get an email at 1.30, but because you are all cracking the <laughs> yesterday, I basically said, right, Inga, come here at 7 o'clock. You can all talk to Inga that's and a work bit, it out. That, that's well, a bit unfair, wrong. though, to us. Like, we've been we asking for a couple of We could have saved Inga some planning. time now. To find out that Scott had actually had the planning since yesterday and had not shared that with the other team members, that choked our chickens pretty, pretty severely. I, I was seriously livid. I have no idea why Scott and Nadia kept plans. I think what was really scary about that moment and that fact was that they are willing to do anything. They don't care if they have to burn bridges or just be really shady. They're in it to win it. We, we realised that at that point and thought, you know what, we either need to play harder or these two are just going to want to take over. Nothing's been set in stone. I have two trees there, but again, that can be changed because I suggested doing an urn, which is on this email that right. was sent. Um, so a feature urn in the front that can yeah. be planted up with something a bit colourful as well. Yeah, I don't like the own idea. Sorry, yeah. can I throw a spanner no, in No, that's works? OK. Can we, can we have a look at this design once you get yeah. it through, sit down and then make a decision? Yeah, absolutely. Um, and more importantly, who's going to come shopping with me for plants to sign off? Who's been? Renee. Oh. I'll go with you. Great, OK. We'll communicate a time and then we'll go. Thanks, guys. Beautiful. Cool. After the disaster of a meeting, Renee and I decided that there definitely needed to be someone more in control of planning. Scott wasn't up to it. He was not. I'm he a was... team player, let's just yeah. say. <laughs> we need to sort out this garden thing. We're Scott so did get that email, just imported it onto anyone, of no, ideas. I had a funny feeling. Um, yeah. Look, Renee and I, I think we're going to have to be the head of the committee there and just take it on. We were quite surprised that Scott and Nadia wanted to take this front yard on. And to be honest, we kind of swayed them from doing that because their bathroom was such, you know, a headache. I would have been happy with the decisions if I've seen it. Yeah. You know, she's sent some ideas through. We would have been happy. It's I'm, not like the I'm groundwork. Spewing. I'm yeah. livid. Well, I'm just livid. a little bit confused that if John and I are supposed to make decisions, every time we try to make a decision... And we're no trying to help you. To make a decision. Yeah, we're trying to build you guys up. That's fine. 
a news are our captains and well, no one else we're is. not being treated like it unfortunately right. so I don't really know what else we're supposed to do I can't do it I can't do it anymore no I really can't do it Righto. All right, we're back to work. We're back going to, to make shopping. a good decision on our kitchen. Where, where are we going? I'm so, I'm so distressed. I'm where are we now. going? So we're going cute. to Beaumont Toilets. It's um, a little bit annoying when you can't get along as a group. You feel like you should, should be able to, and we really want to. We want to make great friends out of this. But reality is that not everyone gets along, and you've got to deal with that and deal with that professionally. Coming up. Uh, we're talking about extension, aren't we? No. You are kidding me. There's double couple trouble as reds. Oh my god. And blues. Black tile, copper edging. No. Struggle making decisions. So we've just told her to get down the back of the room. She's um, a bit stroppy today, actually. This is Renault Rumble. Welcome to Renault Rumble. In the Red House, South Aussies Hayley and Jimmy are struggling with limited space in their dining room. The problem is, in the small area they have to play with, measurements have to be exact, or the extended table isn't going to fit. When we first looked at our space, we thought we were putting in a living room and we were like, this is brilliant. And then we realised we had to put in a dining room and we were like, oh, this is not brilliant. This space is tiny and these people like to entertain. It was just so stressful working out where to put furniture and how to maximise that space. To try and make the most out of their small area, Hayley decides to go on the hunt for an extendable table. I wasn't really confident on the space I had to work with. James, just confirm with me one last time that 2300 table, which means you still have to put a chair on either end, is going to fit. So there'll be room to walk past it there. That's. Nah, oh, nah. Oh. It depends. Like, if it physically fits in the room with chairs on either side, I want to lock it in between the TV wall and the bifold doors. Where are the bifold doors folding now? James. Hayley and I tend to get our wires crossed a lot. So I can fit within 900 with 13, 1300 behind me. Oh, and, and about, you know, 5 mil in front of me. Would you say 1300? There's heaps. And we're talking, at, we're talking at extension, aren't we? No. You are kidding me. No. <sighs> It would, it would fit, it, like... I thought that we had already worked out that 18 fits, and we were trying to now work out if 2200 fits. No. Oh, my God! Um, Arguing is just part of the way James and I communicate. So if I want something done and I'm angry, I'll be like, James, just do it like this! But I'm not really angry at him, I just am yelling, cos um, that's how I like to talk to him sometimes. Are you killing me right now? Why are you... You're... Like, how is this my fault? Tell me if 2200 fits, because if it doesn't, we're not going to get it. I need to know if the extended version fits, James. No. Oh, my God. Can you please go and get Dane? Unfortunately, in these high-pressure situations, I don't 100% trust Jimmy. <laughs> So, yeah. Dane has managed to tear himself away from the phone yeah. and lend his captaincy advice to the drowning Jimmy. How often are you having it as an eight-seater? It's know. predominantly going to be a six-seater, but if they want an eight-seater, it's going to be a bit squishy, but it's doable. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? But we're going to present it as a six-seater. Six-seater. But it is, it is doable. Yeah, we think you should get it, because if we, if we shift it over into the middle of the hallway, there's that... There's that space that can be utilised, like there's no wall, like at the back, like hitting you in the back. Yeah. So the answer is actually yes. And still get the chair in there. Correct. Thanks for all your help. Love you, bye. Yeah. <laughs> that just took such a long time to get to the end result. We went from it doesn't fit to it does fit to it doesn't fit to it does fit to it does fit to it does fit. If it doesn't fit, I'm going to lose my mind. Mount Isa besties Sarah and Renee 
are used to dealing with a different kind of traffic. I wonder how these horses will go riding to Melbourne. I don't know. They're finding navigating the Melbourne traffic more difficult than the build itself. Oh, get over, get over. Oh, are we supposed to turn in? Sarah and I had a bit of a plan just to duck in to Beaumont Tiles. Just to duck in. Get over that thing, I'll see you when you go. Go, go. I've, I've honestly haven't grabbed the bejesus bar so much <laughs> in my life, quite frankly, today. I don't even know. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm seriously going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. Oh, I will take shopping in Mount Isa any day over the hectic, chaotic behaviour of erratic drivers in Melbourne. <laughs> so they don't left. So <laughs> Any day. Miraculously, the girls from the sticks have made it to Beaumont. They're looking for a splashback to add some wow to their kitchen. But the first hurdle is agreeing on the design. <gasps> Got an idea. Black tile, copper edging. No. No. What? I'll do white tile with copper edging. No. Because white should go with silver, it. not copper. No, the black's too much. Think about it. That's our kitchen in there. We've got white island, two windows, white walls, and behind The windows us, aren't going to be white, though. No, they're going to be cedar. Right? Cedar. So, cedar and black. Beautiful. Brown and black complements. Yeah, it does. I don't like it. You're going to have cedar on the windows. I oh, know. No, I'm getting you, but I don't like the black. You hearing what I'm saying? I, I don't like the black. Why? It's yuck. That doesn't help me out. It's yuck. I just don't like it. Oh, look, she's a bit um, emotional. So we've just told her to get down the back of the room here at Beaumont's. She's a bit stroppy today, actually. Traffic was a pain, navigation wasn't working well. I did suggest to Sarah that we do swing into a chemist and buy a big box of laxatives. That might help her out a bit today as well. Yeah. Exactly. Well, I'll stop her having the <laughs> After a bit more argy-bargy, Sarah has finally come around to Renee's choice of colour. I don't think we can do white. I've thought about it, I don't think. The dark colour will break up the bench top in the cabinetry. I think you're right with the black. OK. So we're thinking with this, mm -hmm. this would be our option. Yes. This type of grout mm -hmm. in between. But we might go the brass. That you're talking about. Okay. Yeah, that's what we think. Yeah, they'll look nice. Yeah. I think that'll be good, won't it? Done. Sweet. Nice. Done deal. I'm in a pretty foul mood today. I, I'm not very happy today, I can tell you right now. So I'm just like, OK, you can decide. And look, I really have a lot of trust in Renee and what she's been deciding is good, so. Oh, I'm on point. I'm on point. She's it couldn't get point. better. I am all over this like a rash. <laughs> Renovating an entire house in a week is a massive challenge. In the Red House, the bathroom is packed with trades, busting a gut to get ready for tiling. Out back, the floor's been laid, chip rockers going in, and the boys from Vlux are putting in skylights. All under the watchful eye of the team captain. When Dane was given captaincy, he might have thought that he was giving the position of director. He seemed to do a lot more pointing than he did actually lifting tools. The blue team has also made progress with their floors, sheeting and skylights. Back from Beaumont Tiles, and I think the girls from Mount Isa like what they see. Oh, my Lord! Oh, like ah, it. yes! Looks all right, wow. You've got no idea. It's <laughs> amazing. It's good, doesn't it? Settle down, girls. You're halfway through the week and there's still loads to do. We will always hit the deadline. I hope. <laughs> it's time for tools down. So both teams head back to camp. 
See you, mate. Now I have a surprise waiting for a certain muscular man mount. As we got out of the car and walked over to the caravan. Oh, oh, my, God. God. oh my God. Good old Scotty Cam had pulled me out a brand new gym set. <laughs> I'm going to do it with a broken hand. <laughs> oh. Yes. But not everyone is that impressed. He uh, jumped on it straight jumped away. Jumped on it straight away. Did a couple of uh, bench presses. Don't you have a injured hand? But you just pumped out some real heavy stuff. His hand's obviously not that bad. Yeah. <laughs> God, he hasn't been touching a thing today. Yeah. Yeah. I started to get a bit bit raw because I oh, look I understand that he hurt his hand and we said that we'd cover him um, but that night he's on the bench press back home and like my opinion was if you can bench press you can lift a tool like it's time to get the tool belt on and start helping everyone else out he's not injured now, why do they get a hold Jim is very important to me it's just it's a part of my life I've been training for about 10 years since I was about 15. And these days I do it seven days a week and I do full diets and it is my life. He's very you know what committed I mean? to it. OK, three more, two more. OK, five more. While Dane three impresses more. the blue team with his weightlifting prowess, the rest of the Reds fire up the barbie. I can't even lift that! <laughs> snap, snap your little arm. It seems like the West Aussie Reds and Eastern Blues are getting along just fine. <laughs> We get along really well. Um, there's not much rivalry at the moment. No, none. I feel like there's more rivalry within the team at the moment than there is with the blue team. Oh, yes. Cheers, guys. Yeah, well done. Solid day. Thanks, Leanne. Solid day for the red. Beer. Thanks, Mama Bear. We are kind of splitting a little bit. Yes, you can it's see get, that. It's getting I'm to the it's that getting too. to the point where the couples are going. All right, instead of you know always helping the others, we need to start concentrating on ourselves. After Dane got his gym equipment, that was around the point where everything started kind of to turn. Cracks started to appear. Stress started to show, and then we kind of started to see the true colours of our team leaders. Tomorrow on Renault Rumble, it's the reign of Dane that causes friction. What are you doing right now, Steve? Mum, can you sign this kitchen stuff? The rule with the cars today is no one's going to run off with any car keys without going through me. When Dane was given captaincy, he might have thought that he was giving the position of director. Oh, um, God. You can't rock up at 9 o'clock and say we should have a car. Hold on a minute. Hold on a minute. Rock up at 9 o'clock, Dane. That's a bit rough. He's just coming in. I'm the captain. I'm going to tell you how it is. I'm getting a little bit annoyed. And over at the blue team, it's a crash course on how not to do this. I've been cleaning for other people. I've been doing the front yard and the hallway. She just needs to start whinging. No one told you to go ahead and sand. You didn't ask, did anyone want to help? You just did it. Everyone should be getting into the communal areas. Seriously, I'm, I've had a gut full of her. She just needs to stop. Who else is going to sand it? Oh, shut up. 